we start by saying it's fantastic to be back in Australia. So last week I saw Paul McCartney play live as part of his Got Back tour and I just wanted to make a little video to talk about my experience of the event, also to reflect on the power of this man continuing to tour into his 80s and discuss why that is so significant. I didn't even expect I'd be seeing Paul again in Australia after his 2017 tour which marked a 24 year gap between visits after he was here in 1993. That 2017 show was my first time seeing him live and was an unbelievable experience. So it was a total surprise to learn I'd be able to see him again after six years. Obviously the Beatles and McCartney's music has taken on an entirely new meaning for me since the last time he was here. So I was very excited to see him play live again. We made our way in and after buying some merch and a tour book, because why not? We walked up to our seats, the best ones I could afford at the bottom of the stadium's third level and waited for the show to begin. I just want to say I really dug the music that played before the show started. Yeah. It was remixed versions of McCartney's and the Beatles catalog. They were honestly a huge bop and I love that Paul is perhaps the only artist in the world whose pre-show music is by the same artist as the act you're about to see. Oh, also earlier that day in celebration of seeing him live again, I made my dream Paul McCartney set list and posted it online for a bit of fun. It's filled with a lot of deep cuts and plenty of wings material that he has either never played live or only very rarely. Of course, we all love crowd pleasing hits like Hey Jude and Let It Be, but as someone who's seen him play those songs before and have listened to multiple live recordings of those same hits, I really just wanted to indulge you my ultimate fantasy set list. But I was surprised and delighted when he ended up playing at least five of the songs from my list. I intentionally hadn't looked at any of his previous set lists from the Got Back Tour, so I really didn't know what songs he was about to play. Opening with Can't Buy Me Love was an easy win to get people hyped. It's up tempo and a widely known early Beatles track. I was watching him perform it and I just couldn't believe that the same song that plays as the Beatles jump around a field in A Hard Day's Night was being performed in front of my eyes in 2023 by the same guy who sung it in 1964. Next up was Junior's Farm, which is always a good time, but right after that, the opening bars of Letting Go kicked in and I couldn't believe it. This is one of my top tracks from my second favorite Wings album, Venus and Mars, and I almost put it in my dream set list, but decided on Beware My Love instead. And look, now I know that he plays it regularly, but as I said earlier, I hadn't been looking at his previous set list, so it was a total surprise for me, while everyone else around me looked on with mostly blank expressions. I was basically like Jimmy Tatro's character in Theatre Camp when that one kid auditions with the Post Malone song. Other Beatles tracks like She's a Woman and Got to Get You Into My Life went down a treat. And I was honestly really impressed with the resilience of Paul's voice. For the past 15 years or so, people have always felt the need to mention that as great as it is to see Paul play live, his voice just isn't what it used to be. And while that may be true, I don't think it's really gotten that much worse in the last decade. Like I really think he's sounded pretty much the same since new from 2013. And for an 81 year old, that ain't that bad. Oh, and I also love how much mileage he's getting out of these animations from the Beatles rock band, the 2009 video game that I owned on the Nintendo Wii. Very funny that these are still in circulation. <laughs> I got my first taste of an Egypt Station song with Come On To Me, which I think is one of the better rock tracks from that album. He also played Fuck You, which is fine, but I would have loved to hear almost any other song from Egypt Station. <laughs> Another moment of pure delight for me came from hearing those opening chimes of the Wings song, Let Him In. If it isn't already obvious, I really love Wings and Let Him In is one of my favorite Wings tracks. And yeah, I was just vibing in my seat, man. I, I was loving it. <laughs> At several points in the show, Paul introduces certain songs with a little story of their origin. So we thought what we're gonna do is we've gotta try and make a demo record. And what I'm always impressed by with McCartney is that he tells these same stories in as much detail 
at every single show. Like these stories about songs such as In Spite of All the Danger, Love Me Do, and Something, to name a few, are ones that I heard him tell when I saw him in 2017, and I know he's been telling them long before that. I mean, he started dedicating his ukulele version of Something to George Harrison way back in 2002 at the concert for George. Sometimes if you go around to George's house after you'd had dinner, the ukuleles would come out. I was round in his house one day, and we were just jamming. Playing little songs and stuff. We were playing, and I said, There's a song I do on the ukulele, and I played it for him, play it for you now. And I said, I've learned one of your songs on the ukulele, we'd like to play it for you now. It is a true testament to Paul that everyone that goes to see him gets to see him tell these stories like it's the first time he's told them. Like he's letting us in on a little secret that anyone else outside the stadium doesn't get to know about. He understands his power and what all this must mean to people. He could do a Bob Dylan just play these songs straight without uttering as much as a thank you, but he chooses to invite people in and he chooses to tell these same tales a hundred times over because he knows that for the majority of people, it will be the first time they have heard this. The same goes for when he plays Hey Jude and he gets just the guys to sing the na 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 na's and then just the girls to do it. Okay, this time, just the guys, just the fellas. Come on, boys. And then as the song wraps up, he does that whole, and you were great, and you were great, and you were great, and you were great. <laughs> Like he's been doing that bit for decades, but there is just no song that unifies a crowd more than Hey Jude. So, you know, good for him. And then to talk about his relationship with John and how he wished he was man enough to say, I love you to him, but it's just not what guys did in those days. We didn't ever really get sort of sentimental with each other till much later. And uh, I wrote this next song after John died. I'll see you for John. And then going right into the song here today, it really gets people. Many of whom have probably only heard his Beatles songs and have never heard here today, and it would rock them to their core. McCartney typically keeps things fairly close to his chest in interviews, but when he performs his music, we see the most intimate side of the man, and I'll always be grateful that he chooses to share his art in this way. It, it's really beautiful. If you were here today, and amongst the other non-Beatles songs, we've got plenty of other Wings numbers like Let Me Roll It and Jet. Jet! Oh, and of course, seeing the part of the show where Paul McCartney fucking explodes is always a treat. To live and let die. What was really cool was seeing Paul play You Never Give Me Your Money from Abbey Road. A song that returned to the Got Back tour that he hadn't played live in 20 years and a first for Australia. I was just knocked out by that. Seeing him play Get Back with the footage from Get Back gave the song a real added visual texture that I really loved. But the star moment of the show, and I'm sure many of you will already know what I'm about to say, is during the encore when he plays I've Got a Feeling and uses the footage from Get Back of the Beatles playing it on the rooftop to perform a virtual duet with John Lennon. Peter Jackson, using his sonic wizardry, was able to isolate John's vocals from the 1969 performance in order to pull this off, and even though I knew this moment was coming, it still sent shivers down my spine. It just works so well. And when John comes on the screen to start singing, you can hear an audible gasp from the crowd. My girlfriend didn't even know about this at all and actually cried from how beautiful it was. And it is. It's one of the most meaningful and fascinating examples of watching a duet, a performance through time. Just, just a wonderful artistic statement from Paul McCartney. And then finishing the encore with the tail end of the Abbey Road medley just made for a superb finale. I mean, what more is there to say? Paul McCartney and of course his terrific band and everyone who handles the visuals and sound truly know how to put on a show. 
I was really delighted with the song choices. I even got five from my dream set list. Oh, and I also like how in the official tour book, he points out that he's got fans of all kinds coming to see him after spending hard earned money. And so he feels obligated to play your Hey Jude's, your Let It Be's. But then he says that one of these days he's got to put on a nerd show to satisfy the deep fans. And Paul, whenever you want to put that on, I've got one hell of a set list for you to work off, buddy. I should really be wearing the merch that I bought. That makes more sense. <laughs> but anyway, I just wanted to say thank you, Paul McCartney, for continuing to tour. Thank you for continuing to make people genuinely very happy. It's been a fairly dark time recently, so to have thousands of people come together and sing along to songs that unite us all in joy and love is a very special thing. And definitely not a thing Paul needs to do anymore, particularly not at 81 years of age and for nearly three hours. But he does. He knows that it will make people's year to be able to share the same air as him just for a small amount of time. It certainly did for me. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching this video that's uh, I guess a little different from my usual stuff. Have you yourself attended the Got Back Tour or are you about to see him? Let me know in the comments and feel free to share any stories from your attendance. If you want to see more videos from me on McCartney or the Beatles, you can hit subscribe or I have even more of these kinds of videos on my Patreon. This is also a place where you can support me if you love what I do and I've got some exciting news. I have just launched my official Discord under one of my lower tiers on Patreon. So if that sounds cool, the link to join is in the description. I'll be back with more videos soon, but until then, I will see you next time. Bye.